Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Brian here and it's been a while. I was actually gonna try and get this out to you guys for Christmas, but wasn't quite able to do it with a few of the things that are happening around here. Here it is, this is my activation solver. Uh, for those of you guys out there that have been with me for a while will know that my passion is to help you guys be the artist. And this is a big step in that direction. And this tool um, is designed to speed up your workflows when it comes to growth effects, pyro effects as well. Um, and you'll see a couple of the effects that I'm doing here, just kind of for a demo. I'm going to be giving you guys this hip file as well. That'll be a link offered in the description below. So be sure to check that out. The activation solver is currently available for uh, release. It is $15 right here on the website. I'm going to be giving a discount code though. If you are on my discord, the first 10 users on the discord server, uh, will get this for four bucks. Uh, I'm giving it for 75% off. So if you guys want to check that out, head over to the Discord right now using the link as well to get that code. But once uh, enough users have used it, uh, that code will be gone. So you're going to want to check that out now. But I want to walk you guys through what this activation solver is. So in here, um, if I just dive in, in fact, why don't we drop a new one here so I don't interrupt my scene and we'll just go ahead and allow editing of contents and dive in you'll see what i have here everything is aired out right now because there's no input uh, but if you just take a look what we are doing is we're just taking the pyro source spread and i'm just amplifying what it has the issue with the pyro source spread node um, for any of you guys that have used it before will know that it gives you quite a few attributes. However, it never tells you when that particular point activates. And it was very frustrating for me because every single time I used it, I would have to write an expression, write a solver. And I was like, well, let's just turn this into a tool because I'm sure I'm not the only one here that's frustrated with this. So in here, what's going on is I have this solver here that is going to create a couple of attributes for us. Um, these are just visualizers down here. And then I'm adding these attributes back in, adding the original attributes back in. And what we are left with is something pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and just take a look here on this one so you guys can see it. Visualizer. And if I just hit play, you'll see that I have this. Uh, this is the normalized age um, going through. And we'll also, on top of that, we get an activation frame. Um, this is in text. So you'll see that each one of these are the frames that they activate on. And then um, we also get age, which is just straight up age. So for the point where they activate, how old they mature uh, in 24 frames per second. And so we get these three attributes right here added onto it. And really they're the only three attributes I ever use. That's why I kept them here. In future iterations, what I will do is I will expand upon this uh, solver. But let's go ahead and see this in action now. Let's run through a couple of examples here on how this solver works. So we can actually get intimately aware with the spread and the solver tabs here. So um, I already kind of showed you guys this first example example here uh, where I just have a grid and um, I set a group so the way this works you have to set a point group so here we go we have this point group that I set I just grab these points here on the end and the solver by default knows to add a value to these to be infected across so you don't have to like add temperature you don't have to add anything it's already added inside of the solver so once you put it in the solver uh, I like viewing normalized age here you will just hit play and it should work. You might have to come up here and hit reset um, and make sure your start frame is set properly. Now, with that said, um, there are default settings already here that go quite fast. So we could play with this. We could slow this down and say, okay, I don't want you to go as fast five and I don't want you to look as far forward five. Now with this, uh, we'll talk about this in the next example. There are issues with it um, and I'll show you how to work around them. Um, it, they're the issues that are present with the Pyrosaurus spread node and I'll show you how to work around them here in a few. Now here I've added some noise in the spread. This is the spread noise. And then over here, I also have some noise in the normalize. These are two different noises. This is a post effect and this is a pre effect, a pre process and a post process. So think of the spread tab as your pre process settings and the solver as your post process settings. If I wanted to add a little noise, we could turn this off. It won't really do much for us. In fact, to actually see the noise, let's come down here and turn this one off. And then over here, Let's lower the noise size and maybe the roughness for right now. Oh, it helps if I actually turn it on. There it is. So you can see there's a little bit of noise now um, inside of this. If I go back to, let's say, five, and let's just reset. There you go. You can see there's noise now. All right, cool. So um, very, very useful. Um, 
if I come down here to the solver tab, though, let's talk through this real quick. So we have the activation threshold. So this is um, uh, under the hood, there is a temperature attribute, just like the pyrosaur spread being used to find points next to each other. And that temperature is being diffused um, or being moved along and burning these points. The activation threshold is going to look at a burn attribute here. That's again, under the hood, and it's going to find, hey, this is when they activate. So if you find yourself having points activate too fast, you might want to actually lower this down. So I'm going to or increase this. So we'll say activation threshold five. And if I hit play, you'll see the normalized H isn't happening yet. And then boom, it goes. Is like a little bit of a cook time. Uh, so this is very useful for that. By default, I have it set to 0.1. Now, for the normalized age attribute, we need to set the life. So right now, we're set to 1.26. If I set this to 3, you'll see that they take a lot longer to mature. So this is where growth effects and, and, and growth solvers and intensity ramp ups are set. So life in seconds. And we can remap that too, by the way. So if we come down here and say round, for instance, we can do some really cool stuff here. Um, let's not sit here and wait for two years. Let's go back to one. And you'll see that, boom, they accelerate up, right? And then maybe we can invert this. Uh, actually, I'm doing this right there. Invert this. And there we go. So you get some really, really cool stuff here. Um, one thing that I'm already working on for the next iteration is a blur. So I will actually add in a blur so we don't have this stepping here or this, this uh, banding. Uh, but in this version, though, um, honestly, I've been using this version for over a year, uh, and it is very, very useful. Um, I added a blast node inside of here for you guys, although I ended up just using it outside. Um, so there's a blast node in there that will remove any points that haven't activated yet. Again, we can also add some post noise here. There we go. Now, keep in mind, you'll notice this noise is only on the normalized age right now. Um, and that's what it's really designed to do is to add a little bit of noise in your growth effects. So um, we'll just turn that off right now and I'll turn this um, back off as well. Now, in this first example, what we are doing is I am creating, I'm going to turn off that visualizer here, a tile change. So I'm going to show you guys two ways to do this. This node will give you guys a group. So it's going to give you an active group and it's also going to give you, you know, the activation frame and the age. So if I come down here and um, I wanted to, let's say, do a tile change, I actually have to convert that norm age to the primitive attribute. So we'll just do that here. We're using an attribute promote. Uh, and then in this verse, first version here is I'm coloring by group. But we can also use the attributes that we got, such as norm age. So here is just an example, a really rough example of um, random uh, from attribute. I have zeros and ones. So if you take a look at this, there you go. And let's add a little bit of noise here. So let's go back. I'll add some noise. And there you go. I have this really cool tile color change effect. So, um, And you could do a bunch of stuff with this. Um, I'm just showing the most simple version of it. So that's how it color change. Now, another example here is carpet bombing, right? This is a very popular effect. Um, let me just go ahead and just view this here. And I believe it'll just work. Yeah, there you go. So this carpet bombing effect here, uh, like the end of, end of end game, where a bunch of missiles are blowing up. There you go, this nice carpet bombing effect. Um, and this can be handled with the activation solver. So let's take a look at how I'm using it here. So same thing, started with the grid. Now in this case, we're gonna be moving a low resolution point. This is too low of a resolution for this solver to work. So in order to get this solver to actually be useful for us, what we have to do is create a high res version of this. And almost always you should have a high res version. Um, you'll see that I do this in almost every ver uh, ex example here. I actually don't do it here in the growth example because this is high res, but you know, RBD, carpet bomb, and any other effects, I'm going to do the high res here. Um, so yeah, so do the same thing here. We set the group and then here's the activation solver. Um, I'll turn the visualizer on so you can see it and there it goes. Okay. And what we do is we just use an attribute transfer sop here with a low distance threshold and move those attributes over. Um, keep the distance threshold quite low. I just picked 0.37 because it worked, uh, but keep it low. And then the secret here is to freeze that end of frame. Um, another thing that I also plan on including into the next iteration of the activation solver is this freeze at end of frame um, option here. And this is going to create a map for us. Okay. It's like an activation map is what, what we're going to call it. Okay. And then what we could do is use the activation map now. 
because it has activation frames, and they convert them over to start frames. And in this example, I'm using the normalized age here over and over again, or the activation frame over and over again using random function to create pscale, trailing num, and life here so that we have some randomization. The pyro burst source will accept all of these, right? So here is my um, start frame, my frame duration. This is the activation frame that's running all of these settings here. And what I'm left with here, so if we take a look at this, is this. So we have this nice carpet bombing pyroburst source. I'm just using the pyroburst source for this example, but I'm sure you guys can think of, you know, maybe creating your own emitters here. Um, and the rest here is just a simple pyro process here. Um, you know, throw in a pyro solver, and this is what we got. Really fun. So I encourage you guys to play with this on your own time. Have a little bit of fun with it. Let's go over here to the next example where we use it for RBD. So we've done it for just, you know, simple SOP level geometry procedurals. Here's a sim, carpet bomb. Here's another sim. Let's do an RBD here. So in this case, I'm going to create a wall. Uh, and this wall, we're just going to go ahead and scatter just the same way that we did here for the high res. And this is where we do the activation solver. And so um, here, I just create a group. Now, in this case, I wanted to showcase a parameter that I glossed over, and we're going to talk about it here, um, here on the front, which is the initial point group and the scatter group. So let's talk about these two real quick. So the initial point group always has to be set for this solver to work. Um, if this isn't set, it won't work. And this is going to be your ignition point. But the scatter group is there so that we can actually contain which points will be iterated over. If you don't have this set, it's just going to iterate over all of them. In this case, I am creating a scatter group. And then I create another set group down here inside of that scatter group. And if we go to the activation solver, you'll see that it actually deletes all these extra points for now. And there we go. All right, so we go to normalized age. There you go. Take a look at that. Right? Really cool. And then over here, what I have is I have this Voronoi fracture that I created. So just a really simple Voronoi fracture, nothing too crazy. Um, and then we do the same method, low distance threshold and move the attributes over. Um, over here, RBD configure um, is just packing this for me. And then I create some normals. So you guys can see this. Let's go and turn the normals on. And I need to throw an add down here so you guys can see it. Okay. So I'm just throwing some normals on these um, onto these points. These are going to be the directions that these pieces will travel. And then I'm going to displace along those normals using the normalized age, right? So we create a normalized age. So as they get older, they move. Pretty cool. Then I use a, a when they're going to activate, which is they're going to activate when that normalized age hits a certain threshold. And then uh, I use a trail to record their velocities. And then the RBD bullet solver will just take it from there. Look at that. Cool. I don't need anything to impact. Now, you could use this like I'm using it right now where we just have something come in really easily to use, or you can use this along with your other simulations out there. Um, think of like people running through the wall and then, you know, maybe the wall breaks a little bit after. Um, you can use this to help refine your simulations, this activation solver. So that's the RBD, you know, example. Uh, pretty cool. The last one I want to show you is really the inspiration behind this whole um, node that I built, this HDA, uh, was this. I had a student who needed to do a freezing effect on a character, and I realized that I should just write this into a solver because uh, it was hard to explain to him how it worked. Um, for this method right here, let's go and get rid of the visualizer for right now and get rid of the... You will see that I start with a grid. I'm just going to scatter some points here. I actually scatter a lot of points for this example group. And then here's the activation solver. So if I hit play, this one's a very slow one, but if you can imagine what we're going to try and do is we're going to do this ice growth effect. Okay. And I'm just doing a really simple one. Uh, if you remember down here, I actually have a, a, a remove inactive points. I actually decided to do it here. I wanted to delete by the normalized age, uh, but this one would have done just a perfect job of this, by the way. I just wanted to show that you can actually do it as a post effect and outside the node or within the node. They both work, so remove inactive points. But all we're doing is we're just removing points that are inactive. Here they go. I added the color here. Coloring by the normalized age, the same thing that we did in the very first example. Uh, and then over here is uh, I'm just setting some P scale and then I'm using the normalized age again, this time unremapped, nothing crazy to multiply the P scale that I created. 
Why am I doing that? Well, take a look at this. Right? So if we take a look down here, and you'll see that I can create this growth propagation effect. Now, I'm just using disks uh, right now, but if you can imagine if you're using, like, you know, branches, they, they, they can grow. Like, let's say a sweep node here. Uh, they can grow as um, as as the ice, ice spreads, basically. So how am I, how am I doing it? Uh, this will probably end up being in a tutorial at some point, So, but I might as well just show it to you guys right now. All I did is I created an attribute here called uh, variant using the integer, attribute just integer. Um, we go 0 to 14, and then I run it off ID. This is important because as the points delete, they will lose their, um, their point number. So you have to make sure you set this as ID. And I set that ID up here, ID equals that PT num. So we add a variant. And then in here, we're running, we should create a circle. Um, I copy it 15 times because I'm doing 15 variants. And then I run a for loop over those 15 where I randomize the noise off of an iteration. So each one has their own. And this is what they look like. So um, this is just a bunch of flakes here that I created. And then I give them their variant, copy to points, use the variant attribute. And this is what we got. And the P scale is what's controlling their scale, so they look like they're growing on. Just a fun, cool little growth effect that you can use with this node. This is one of the most powerful nodes in my tool bag. It's one of my favorite tools I use. Uh, I use it probably in every project uh, nowadays for effects as well as motion design. It's just so useful. Um, anything where I have like transitions or growth, um, I'm using this this node. So again, it's on my website right now. If you want the discounted price for a limited time only, you have to be on my Discord. So head over to Discord. You'll get the code there. So let me know what you guys think of this tool. Uh, I would love to make future iterations. I'm actually already working on the next version of this. I don't know when I'll be able to release it. I am going to use it in a workshop here pretty soon as well too. That'll probably be included in the pricing of that workshop. Be sure to sign up for the email newsletter as well. This is a great way to stay in contact with me. You'll get updates for all the new releases and you also get good freebies over here in the future. I want to make sure that you guys get the first heads up and that's going to be given out through my newsletter. So be sure to sign up. I'll see you guys in the next video. And remember, always be creating.